uplift the lies one day at a time. Kimmy Kim and Elations Radio. They're here to get your day going fine. Kimmy Kim and Elations Radio. Kimmy Kim and Elations Radio. Kimmy Kim and Elations Radio. And here's your host. Miss Kim Robinson. Hey! Hey, I'm Dr. Scott, and I'm here with my good friends, Sheldon Murdoch.
Amen, amen, amen. It's working out in my favor. It's working in your favor. Hey, I want you all to get excited. I want you all to get into the into the time of a good time here. Uh, hey, my name is Calvin Logan with the Logan Power Show. Nationwide, worldwide. Hey, we're having a blessed time. We got a lot going on today. Uh, so, man, we got we got a, a, a ton of guests coming on. We're gonna shock your minds about what our guests are gonna talk about, what they've been through, uh, their trials, their ups and downs, of how God has truly blessed their lives. Well, hey, before we get to our guests, we definitely want to get into prayer because we definitely want God to be our source. Because uh, God is our source. I know he's my source. I know about y'all. So before we get to our first guest, let's go into prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Father, for this opportunity. We thank you, Father, for this being your presence. Father, we thank you for that. We are the head, not the tail. We are above and not beneath. We thank you, Father, for how you're blessing those that are listening on the call and those that are on the replay. Father, that you bless every guest that comes on. That, Father, you just touch their hearts and they pour out what they have in store for the people. And, Father, that you bless this ministry. Father, you bless this show. You bless our, the Network Relations Radio. And, Father, we just thank you and praise you and all good that prayer. Say amen, amen. Well, ladies and gentlemen, again, my name is Calvin Lowe, the Logan Power Show nationwide, worldwide. You can look at our website today, www.thelogenpowershow.us. Again, T-H-E-L-O-G-A-N-P-O-W-E-R. S H O W dot U S. Well, my first guest, guest, aka Dr. Mel. She's the one and only, oh, ladies and gentlemen. Let's give a that round of applause for Dr. Lee Melanie Manor. How you doing? Well, I am doing great. Can you hear me good? I can hear you good. Can you hear me better? Can uh, that, me no, that, that, yeah, I hear you perfect. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Just want to make sure I make sure I got you. Yeah, you make sure I can hear you definitely well. Um, but a little bit we'll talk about Dr. Dr. Melanie Manor. She is Dr. Mel. She's the founder of Aspiring Knowledge Inc. Free Woman of God yes. Ministry since 2008. She accepted her calling in ministry in 2009. Received her certificate and license in ministry in January 2016, where she's continuing her growth at the World Truth International Ministries in Arlington, Texas, under Senior Pastor Dr. Kevin E. Henry. Dr. Mel received her doctorate of humane letters in 2010 at Agape Bible College in Jacksonville, North Carolina. But we want to talk about her book, ladies and gentlemen. Yes. This is an interesting title. I know it's going to shock your mind. My Bumps Have a Purpose. Think about it. My Bumps Have a Purpose. Sometimes we try to mask the truth of what our ugliness can t- can teach us. Dr. Mel shows how our pain can produce power and the madness we go through can have a method in making us what we're meant to be. All right. Well, Dr. Mellon, you have the floor, ma'am. Let's talk about yourself um, and my bumps have a purpose. How do they have a purpose? Oh. How do my bumps have a purpose? Well, you know, the, the interesting thing is, um, uh, I, do I call you Dr. Calvin or Mr. Calvin? What do I call you? <laughs> Brother Calvin, I keep I keep it saying I'm I'm working on that doctorate degree. I think everybody has told me I need to get my doctorate and I said, Man, I don't feel like going back to school, but hey, I'm working on it, okay? I'm working on it. Thank you for putting out the end. Okay, I'm working on the doctorate. Uh, hey, I'm just I'm just speaking it into existence. But you know, the thing I loved about um this book, My Bumps Have a Purpose, um, it, it was actually just a total testimony about what I've been through. You know, everybody thinks that Dr. Mel is like this strong pillar in the, you know, community. She's strong and, you know, she can do anything. But they didn't realize what I went through to get to this place. You know, so that's the beginning portion of how this all started. Got it. Absolutely. Now, being um, the doctor in the house and doing what God has called you to do, um, my bumps have a purpose. So can you elaborate what a bump is? Because, you know, sometimes we think it's in our face, but based off of what your book is talking <laughs> about, you talk about bumps being trials and phases, and these particular trials and yeah. phases can turn into a purpose. 
Oh, yeah. You know, I'll even just do this on, on page nine of my book. I actually outline the bumps of what I went through. And, you know, I'll just throw out a few of them because I don't want to give it all away. I really want people to go there with me and read it for themselves. But, you know, I'm a woman, you know, that uh, I love children, but I had seven pregnancies and no birth. So that was a huge bump for me because I almost felt like I wasn't worthy and God didn't trust me with children. But then I realized later on, and they'll find out in the book, too, that that wasn't the case. It was that, you know, I needed to not focus on that. So, you know, um, seeing death too much, you know, um, no birth, uh, that, too much freedom in my life. Those are some of my bumps. Slander, abusive, you know, abuse from men. You know, I've had that problem happen to me. Racism, uh, jealousy, you know, even attempting suicide. You know, so those are some of them, and I want everybody else to read the rest of them. I don't want to go through too many of them. But those are some of the things that actually happened to me. But when you look at me today, Calvin, you'd sit there and go, I can't believe that she went through that because I don't look like what I've been through. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, like me, when you were explaining, um, this is off off air, y'all. She was explaining some of the trials and tribulations um, that she's went through and talking about um relationships and going through oh. those 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 um trials that can really to take you out and how you overcame them because I know that okay. what we sometimes we don't do um some people don't really tell their full story um oh, but-, but can you elaborate on this uh one of your testimonies that you went through or like one of your bumps that turn into your purpose for your life? Well, let, let me start, first start by doing this. You know, I started to realize later on in my life, at, you know, I'm 51 right now. So this all came about in the last maybe 12 years, but I started to realize that truth heals. The truth mm-hmm. heals. So I'm just to a lot of people right now around in the church, in, in the street, at the college. If you catch me in the grocery store, I'm going to try to minister to you right there. But a certain group of people tend to draw to me, and then most of them have the same issues and the problems that I encountered. See, but I got through them. And once I tell them, yeah, I've been there. I've done that. Oh, yeah, I know what you're talking about. Yep, I understand. And then sometimes we even speak the same words at the same time. And they're going, wait a minute, you've been through this too? And I'm like, absolutely. Mm-hmm. But here's the problem is, you know, my truth is what made me free. And that's why I was trying to tell them, I need you to tell your truth. Let that stuff out. You know, because it often, you know, is used as a great influence or a testimony to somebody else. So me and you were talking about one of those bumps. I'm not sure which one. I didn't talk to you about, tell you the truth. <laughs> I'm not sure which one it was. <laughs> you, um, you, uh, you were going through one bump when you talked about uh, molestation. Um, you mentioned that. Oh, gosh. Gotcha. Um, you, me- yeah. you mentioned um, uh, an- another one with marriage. And you talked about your child, so that's why definitely you can choose which one you want to go through so that we can, so the listeners know we got some real people on the line that's going through some stuff. Oh, amen. Um, you know what? I, I want to just talk, and this, is, this one is about my strength. You know, I've always been a very strong personality, and I'm not even going to say mm-hmm. strong in stature, but my personality has always been blown up, and I think it was because I was an only child. You know, it was only me, mm-hmm. you know, so I got a lot of attention. But strength right now was a bad word for some people, you know, especially men that I've encountered in my lifetime. Um, My strength was too much for them, and they did everything they could to diminish that, to break it down, to break me down because of their insecurity with themselves, I believe. And this is me now telling you this because I didn't know that then. Um, And Mm. it almost broke me to the point of wanting to say "I'm, I'm not worthy of being in this world. This is not for mm. me, you know, because I'm coming up against all these guys. And I call them my violators in the book because I was violated by men. You know, they, they didn't understand that, you know what, I am, I'm, I'm a good thing for you. They never understood that. So they did everything to try to destroy my conscious, uh, my, my, my uh, perspective of myself to the point of wanting to me saying, you know what, Lord, I don't need this anymore. I'm, I'm just going to leave. And I meant leave the world. You know, and and that toll on me at one point, you know, to the point I had to say, hey, who is it going to be? Is it going to be me that's living or, you know, them? 
And I said, you know what? I'm not worthy. Mm. Mm. That's definitely yeah. deep. I know a lot of times what what a lot of times what we don't do, we don't be honest and be forthright and let people know um, we got these issues going on. You know, I don't want to talk yeah. about just one nationality, but you see a lot when it comes to African Americans, oh, yeah. Hispanics. Um, that nationality, mm-hmm. those two in particular, a lot of you know molestation, rape, um, those things are very prevalent, but they're not yeah. really talked about, and they happen no. in places that you never thought never happened. Um, in the safety of your home, could have happened That's at right. church, could have happened at um, a place in a park, it could have happened. Um, you know, so just a regular place, you know, I trusted this person, you know, uh, I gave this person my everything, or we um, sort of um, negate the fact that um, you see a lot in today's society, especially in the United States, we sort of um, level level the, the molestation when it comes to different nationalities. You see it a lot. Mm-hmm. Like you say, if this person was this race, um, it's top line news, bam, it's way out there. This person was raped. If you say, well, this person is a of a darker con- a complexion, it sort of, you know, dwindle it down some. It's sort of like, well, you know, it's not that big of a deal, or your stature is not there. And we try to level right. people's um, trials. And we say, well, that happened 30 years ago. That happened 10 years ago. That happened 15. Get over it. You know, why are you still harping on the situation? Why still coming back to you? Um, and people don't have no one really to talk to when they're going through these trials and tribulations. Um, That's how, right. how are you able to speak to those individuals that come to you and say, hey, your book um, changed my life, or I was going through that same situation? How are you able to heal those individuals, able to talk to them like others can't talk to them? Well, you know what? I'm I'm one of those people that I'm I'm real. You know, I'm a New Yorker by you know, I live in Texas but I'm a true New Yorker. Still have that New York mentality to an a point that, you know what, I'm bold with it. And I'm very honest with what happened and how you can come out. But then see I'm gonna ask you several questions about it. Do you really want to come out? You know, are you using mm. this as a, as a crutch for yourself? Because you're doing nothing but creating chaos within your own self in order to be able to survive. And you, and obviously you're not surviving because you're still thinking about it. You know, so Absolutely. You know, I'm, I'm going to hit you. I, I, I call it a velvet brick. I throw velvet bricks a lot, you know, because I really want <laughs> you to wake up, you know, and see what you're doing to yourself. Are you free? And I am free to talk about everything that ever happened to me is why this book actually came about. And if I'm free, then guess what? There's peace in my life. You know, I, I sleep very well at night, you know, with no problems. I have a beautiful family. My, my you know, everybody, we, we love each other. And I know how to love mm-hmm. now because I didn't at first. I didn't understand what love was until I met my, my now husband. Um, I didn't get it. I had no idea. I thought it was mm-hmm. exactly what I was writing in the book, which was I was being violated. You could tell me I'm stupid, I'm ugly, I'm dumb, you know, which is what I heard mm-hmm. in my relationship. You know, but then I said, well, you know what, fine. I'm not going to, and you know what, I'm just going to find and change change uh, over and see maybe if I get better feelings over there. You know, all mm, of these wow. things are going through my head, and I believe that that's what happens to people. We get caught up in the circumstances, but I found a way to let the world know how I changed from being a victim of my circumstances into a vessel for somebody around me. Amen. And for those that Amen. want to know, my bumps have a purpose. He was with me all the time, is available on Amazon right now. Amazon.com has got five-star rating, uh, something, a book that you want to put into your house on. Yes, ma'am. So, so people are yes. definitely reading this book. They're getting connected to it. But if we have any guests on the line want to ask Dr. Melanie Manor a question, please unmute yourself. Tell us who you are, where you're calling from. And uh, we'll give you some time to give you a couple minutes to ask a question. So if you are on the line, please unmute Thank yourself. You. Tell us who you are, where you're calling from. So give an opportunity to those who's listening. Um, cause I don't want to do all the hogging. You know, give me one. I'm giving it twice. You know, a lot of times people want to see 
<laughs> when you have this kind of platform, yeah. not everybody's either willing to click that, you know, to always to, to ask questions. But one thing yeah. I want to know is the part I want to know, how long did it take you for you to heal? Because I know a lot of times people say, like, you know, I've written a book, and some people say, like, well, you know, you think the person is healed. And, like, nah, they're still healing right now. The, you know, just because they've written a book does not mean that they are healed yet unless they have made that declaration. How long did it take for you to heal? I, I would truthfully say, you know, I've been married now since 2003. And my husband is probably listening. He might say, yeah, you got it right. Um, since 2003. But you know what? When I truly began to heal, because I was still going through some things, 2016, when I accepted my calling, um, I decided, you know what? I'm going to try you, God. I'm going to try you. But I'm going to be all the way in this time. Because, you know, we sometimes we play with God a little bit too much. And so I didn't want to play with him anymore. And I wanted him to truthfully use me. And so I decided then I needed to start shedding off some things. Even back then, so I mean, I still think I had that stuff in the back of my head, even during my my great marriage that I had. But a lot of stuff was still there, and I know I wasn't completely free. So 2016, I can say that I truly decided I need to get God involved in this. And then once I got Him involved, all of a sudden I realized He's been with me the whole time. I never knew that. I thought He left me. Because I, sometimes I, I didn't hear him anymore. We, we, it was like he wasn't talking to me, but he was there. And now I know for sure because I can truthfully, clearly hear him. Wow. Wow, that's that's, that's a, an eye-opener. I know a lot of times we we got to be honest with ourselves. And yeah. like you said, you've been married now going on 16-plus years. Uh you know, it took you to, you got your call in 2016, so just healing three years ago, and now I'm fresh, I'm a new. Now, how has it made, has it made you a better person from healing? Kind of a lot of times what, what we hear is people say, well, you know, you know, why would you forgive somebody or why would you move on? But a lot of times when we try to tell people it's for you, it's for you to heal. How did, That's right. how did it change your inner inner? and your outer appearance when you finally got healed? Well, you know, I'll tell you this. I have no, I, I used to have headaches, right, all the time. I mean, straight mm-hmm. up migraines. And I knew it because there was something wrong with in, the inside of my body. There was something wrong going on. But you know what? When I started looking and I said, you know what, that was your past. And I, I, I learned to leave the past in the past. Leave it there. Mm-hmm. Don't bring it into your future. I mean, it's not going to help you at all by just holding on to that thing that hurt you before. And so it took me to just say, I'm done with that, God. I'm giving it all to you. And I gave everything to him, everything, my children, you name it, the fact that I didn't have any of my own body, but all these people that are around me, it just overflowed. And I was just overflowing with, oh, my gosh, all these blessings you're giving me? Because I let go. But if I kept holding on to that, I would have never been able to move forward. And moving forward is is the key. It's important to move forward. Amen. Amen. Absolutely. You know, uh, healing healing is a um, – healing starts internal first before it hits, hits external. You know, healing is oh, not right. something that, you, that you'll never see – You'll never see it always instantaneously all the time. It may be a process for healing. Um, you That's know, right. someone said when they accept Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, transformation happens inside. But it may take a while mm-hmm. to, hit, to see the external true transformation of somebody when they said, I made a, sh- a full shift. Um, I, I <laughs> yeah. look at healing like it's like losing weight. You know, people say, you know, like, you know I'm, I'm, I'm losing okay. 30 pounds. Yes, That's man. right. <laughs> You know what? I, I think, too, our mind has to be transform- transformed, too. You know, I, I wrote, I um, helped a, a friend of mine, Dr. Charles Kent, write a book called A Word Fitly Spoken. And that word he put mm-hmm. in that book, mind, main ingredient navigating your destiny. If I didn't clean up that part, then let me tell you, 
I would have been no good to anybody out here, nor to the to the blessings and the things and the calling that God had for me. My mind had to be right. And if I'm all concentrated on all these things that happen to me, then my mind is not right. And I keep telling people it's the main ingredient navigating their destiny. The stuff you're putting in your head, it's talking to you. And it's trying to bring you and get you off balance. Because, see, the enemy does not want us to succeed. He doesn't want us to do what we're called to do. He told you, Calvin, to go ahead. You need to be on this radio show. You need to make this syndicated. It needs to go all over the world. Had you not done that, then what would happen? The word wouldn't get out. So the same thing with me. I'm free, and they need to see somebody look free. And so when people see me, they're going, I can't believe you went through that. And I said, exactly, I went through. I didn't stay there. Amen. Amen. You know, we we always want to, uh, I think a lot of times, you know, people that that have – gone through these type of ordeals are now starting to put it down on paper. And we are actually mm. getting to see more of these things um, break generational cycles. And what I Amen. mean by that is a lot of times what we don't understand is that the the skeletons come out the closet. Most of the time it yeah. comes out when somebody dies. And you never get to see the healing, the full manifestation. And then you know all. I didn't know that person was going through all that. I didn't know that person had this many, this many bones in their closet, or they were going through these different type of trials and tests. You know, um, that's right. Why they didn't get help? You know, where was everybody else at? Why didn't nobody see um, the person was going through? You know, Hmm. and I think what we don't do is we're not really watchful for people and we yeah. are more consumed in our own situations and we're not looking into other people's situations and that's the reason why uh we don't really have that kind of mindset anymore um yeah you know i think that yeah, I, I what we do is in, I don't, yeah i want to be open with people about that because of what you just said you know it's that mindset that people are in they're stuck there and you know what, if we don't, if we're not open enough and they see, because, you know, if they, if they see me as strong right now, they got to know what I went through to get to strong. You see what I mean? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Well, Dr. Manna, we want to thank you for uh, coming on uh, to us here on the Logan Power Show. Uh, we love to have I- you on some more times. You're always more than welcome to come and give us always uh, some time. Tell us more about what's going on. Now, how can people get in contact with you? They can get in contact with me by um, emailing me at mybumpshaveapurpose at gmail.com. You can always Mm -hmm. get me that way. Um, If if you're in the town, you know, you're in the Dallas-Fort Worth area, you can come and see me on Sunday mornings, too, (laughs) at the church (laughs) at Word of Truth International at 823 North Center Street. In Arlington, Texas, we're right there by the stadium, you know, with big, uh, it looks like Marvin the March in that ailment, you know, so you can always see me there. Um, I will be at a book show in Dallas this weekend on July 12th and 13th also, um, doing a five-minute speak on my book and also being there just to, you know, love on the people that are there then too. And then I have also another gig in um, Austin on August 3rd at She Walks Fierce Conference, so you know, things are, are looking up, um, Calvin, and I really appreciate you having me come on, just talk a little bit about everything. Um, but it's it's there, y'all. It's healing. It's it's there. I created this book to be simple, interactive, and useful in any moment. And I just want people to continue to use it as a daily devotion as they're trying to come out also. Amen. Amen. And when is book number two coming out? In another couple of years, I need to work finish this thing because this is taking off more than I thought. <laughs> I, I I had no I, I didn't even see this happening this way, um, but I want to okay. focus on this one because I think if I can get people to understand and first identify your issues, and that's what your bumps are, identify them and then dismiss them. Once I can get them to that point, then my next book and um, it's it's called Come Out from Among Them, so that's going to be the next one. Okay. 
Well, I, we're mm-hmm. going to be looking out for that coming out soon. Within the next year, a couple years or so, we claim that that your crusade of traveling and evangelizing the people that their bumps have a purpose. Um, one, to get exposed, uh, and number two, that people get to see what God has in store. So we just want to thank you again, um, and we pray heaven's best upon you, and we're looking forward to talking to you more. And uh, I'm you. looking forward to see your stuff on the big screen, okay? Amen. I'm looking for that, too. <laughs> yes, ma'am. I appreciate it. Thank you yes. so much. And God bless no you. No problem. God bless you. God bless you. All right, ladies and gentlemen, you heard Dr. Melanie Manor. My bumps, I told you again, get that book today, get it in your, down into your spirit. My bumps have a purpose. He was with me all the time. Dr. Melanie Manor, get that book with yourself and put it into your roller decks ASAP. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we're coming strong again, the Logan Power Show. We have our guest number two. She's a book author as well. First time guest on the Logan Power Show. She has a book that's coming out real soon called The Porch Down Home. She's the one that's that's only is Deborah Riley. How you doing, ma'am? Hey, how you doing, Calvin? Can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. Can you hear me? Yes, loud and clear. All right. All right, ladies and gentlemen. So, again, the book is called The Porch Down Home um, for the one and only Miss Deborah Renona Riley Baker. Excuse me, Deborah Renona Baker. Just make sure you definitely get Miss Baker in, in your Rolodex. The Porch Down Home is a true Life's a life story, but the joys of growing up with loving grandparents and the pains of growing up in the small community of the IXL Oklahoma and the heart of Oak Fisky County at the tragic uh, accidental death of their parents, sisters, Avi and Cassie had to go live with their grandparents whom they referred to as Big Daddy and Big Mama. So... Ladies and gentlemen, Miss Deborah Baker, how you doing, ma'am? Everything good? Yes, it is. I, I just praise God for this opportunity, and I thank you for giving me the chance to speak about my book on your show. Absolutely, absolutely. I wanted to make sure I got the name of the, the book title correct and the name of yourself. I know you have I go by Deborah Riley, but on the book is Deborah Baker, so I just wanted to make sure I was saying that correctly so that all our viewers can yeah. listen in and get that when it comes out. So tell us about so the, the why reason, did you get this so book? So, Calvin, the reason for, for the name is because a publisher had told me that my maiden name would go with me to the grave, and that name would Got never it. change. So my maiden name is Deborah Renee Baker, and that's going to be on Got my it. book. I am married to a wonderful man, and so my full name is Deborah Renee Baker Riley. Got it. Amen. Amen. I just want to make sure I got all the names together. So Miss Deborah Riley is is her her name, but her main name is Miss Deborah Baker. So definitely I want to know about this book. What made you come up with the porch down home? How'd that come about? Yes, thank you for asking. Well, the impact that my grandparents left on me was so powerful that I wanted to write their story so that their legacy would not be lost. And I thought to myself, who would want to read a story about some grandparents, you know, old people? (laughs) And what made me feel really good was that my son, who's a millennial, you know, those are the people in their 30s and 40s or whatever, whatever the millennials are, he said, Mom, (laughs) you have to get that book out there. And I was like, really? And he said, yes, so that generations to come will appreciate and discover what life was like back in the day when you were growing up, especially since you enjoyed it so much that you you wanted to write about it. So my grandparents branded my memory banks with a lasting mark of fun times. You know, those were during the times when we were poor and we didn't know about it. You know, when, when we didn't always run to a doctor because they had those home homemade remedies. And I'm telling you, we it was one of them little drinks we would take. And when we woke up, that illness was gone. 
you know, yes, and, and when they would pile Absolutely. all of us in the old car and just take all of us to church and, you know, those those times were just good. You you didn't hear about some of the things you hear about now, the shootings in the church and um, people disrespecting God's house. Our grandparents didn't put up with that, but they had so much love for us that we felt like we were important, not just to ourselves, but to the world. We felt like we were important, whether or not someone else made us feel like that. They made us feel like that. You know, and and just the impact that they had on my life, I just thought to myself, I just don't want their legacy to die out. I want somebody to know what they were like, the sacrifices that they made. So I put it in a story, and uh, it's a creative story. I took the experiences I had with them and created a story with it so as to make the book more interesting to read. Amen. Okay. So when you think about your grandparents, what they taught you, um, you know, house home remedies. I know mine was it was called cot liver oil. Nobody anybody knows what that is. Oh um, gosh. It was, yeah. some, it was some nasty it was some nasty stuff mama used to give me, but hey, tell you right now, I know whatever was wrong was right. After that you had the right. cot liver yeah, oil it, nasty as no it, it was straight nasty, but um, it definitely uh, did it did did it work. So um, there's a lot of home remedy tricks, um, a lot of prayer and faith, um, not as much as technology. So has by your by your grandparents instilling such greatness into you? How did that change you raising your children and being a, a wife? What how did that impact you growing up and how you are today? How that affected your life? You know, I want, I wanted to mimic them. I wanted to be like them. I wanted to do the things that they did. They didn't go around cursing people out. They didn't go around with an idea of killing people or hurting anybody. They wanted the good mm-hmm. for everybody, whether or not it was their family member or a stranger off the street that they didn't even know. And I'm going to tell you, they didn't meet strangers. Anytime they were driving, they would wave at people on the street. And, you know, some people are not used to that. And they'd be like, okay, what's going on with those folks? Or we would go somewhere shopping or somewhere, and they just just start speaking to people and just start talking to them. So there wasn't a stranger that they ever met. And, and one thing they told us, you know, be nice to people, smile at people, because those things take you further than any degree on a piece of paper would take you. You know, this, the things that they taught us in life have carried us really far, whereas if they had, if we had not been taught those things, I don't know where we would be. Wow. Okay. Well, hey, we, 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 we definitely uh, appreciate you, you know, taking things that you learned in your past and applying it to your life. I know a lot of times what we do is um, we don't use – uh, past information to help us build it, build our character, and build who we are. Um, the the generation that I call the baby boomers, uh, <laughs> those are the ones that are up in age, and those are the ones who are going to, in the next ten, twenty years, is their time is going to be gone. The next 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 grade is up, and then you got your millennials, and you got your generation. X and then Z and so and so on and so forth. Um, what what do you think we need to do to make our society better? Since you know, for you, you you had the privilege of having two grandparents. A lot of times, people don't have the the um the you know the have the I guess you would say that have the does not really know what a really a grandmother and a grandfather is. Because a lot of times, you have it to where Parents are have actually having children, and children are having other children. It means you got grandparents right. at the age of fifty some odd years old, and I would say fifty to the like forty some odd years old. Let's be exact. Like you're forty some odd years old, you still get you haven't hit the fifty century mark, and you say I'm a grandparent, and then the person that you're supposed to have raised. That individual hasn't really hit their mark, 
and you got really the the grandparent is really raising not just one, they're raising two still. The one who just had a child, and they're raising their child as well, and their grandparent, their grandparent is raising them. So it's like a generational cycle of we're not really um, allowing grandparents to be grandparents, like people trying to be grandparents right. too early, but that's yeah. making sense. Right. Well, what they should do is read my book. And I do want to tell you, um, in my book, I want people to appreciate the people who are in their senior years. And one of the reasons is because you don't know what they've been through in their life and what they've been through to get us where we are. I know my grandparents didn't go to college, but they helped send us to college, you know. <clears throat> and, and so they made sacrifices so that we could get to where we are today. And when we got there, they were so proud. It was just so good to see the look on their faces, you know, when you were handed mm -hmm. a degree and then you got that first job where you're making a living and not just sitting around doing nothing. You were making something and doing something with your life. That's what gave them back the payment of what they did for us. But then I'm going to tell you, writing a book wasn't easy. When they both, my grandfather lived to be 92 mm -hmm. and my, my maternal grandfather and my maternal grandmother lived to be 87. Mm -hmm. In order to write their story, I had to make sacrifices too because I'd never done that before. And so I had to research how to write a book. And because life <laughs> yeah. happens, meaning I had to work full time and all of this, it took me over a year to complete the story. But let me tell you what. Once you set out to do something, use your God-given gift, and you see it come to fruition. When I saw my book bound with my name on it, that was one of the most exciting things that has ever happened to me in this life. And what way, better way to celebrate than for my book to be about two people who showed me love, who I'm able to show love back. Now, they're in heaven, and I don't know if they know I wrote this, but other people <laughs> will know it and hopefully appreciate Amen. their story. Absolutely. I believe that, you know, you you know, you have a something there that people don't really talk about. I mean, this is this is just from doing my homework history and knowing things. If the, the first Great Depression, 1925-1924, if your grandparent had a took heed to entrepreneurship, own, owning their own property, not selling out, just weighing through the tough times, they'd be very wealthy right now. Or your family would be very wealthy if they stuck 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 together through the time. Now, looking at it now, like, you know, you think about it, 1925, 1924, um, that's almost pretty much almost 95 plus years ago. Um, you would say like, you know, Calvin, you know, I can go back in time, you know, where would I go? And I told people right now, it's like generations are generations, you know, you know, people of that caliber, their faith was different. You didn't have, um, cell phones. You didn't have, uh, electric cars, social media, right. the internet. You know, they didn't you, even you have a, a TV in their house till later on in yes, the year. Right. What they listen, the way they listen to the news, they had the radio. So when we went to their house, we, were, we weren't sitting in front of a TV to be entertained. We had to go outside. So we played with the <laughs> animals. We got to know the fruits that were growing on the trees and on the vines, and we played in the dirt and mixed it with water and had those mud pies, you know, and you cut them up in, in your little pie sections with a with a stick and you served it to your to your cousins and your siblings. Yeah. You know, those were the times. Um, and they lived in a predominantly black town. So in the book, I try to give a little bit of history, you know, um, about where they lived. And that was a real place, uh, Oak Fusty County. So they lived in IXL, which was a very, very small town between two small, bigger, smaller towns, which was Boley, Oklahoma, 
in Okima, Oklahoma. And so wow. it's just a lot of history there that I want people to know the book has some humor, it has some tragedy, it has moral to the story, and basically it's just life in general. Amen. Amen. And can you give people the release date for the book? I know that it's coming out this month. I want to get the exact release date. Actually, the book was published a while back by a publisher who closed its doors. And so, in a way, I, at first I was, you know, torn from that because I thought, how am I going to get copies of my book? Well, I'm self-publishing it. And so it's like you said, yes, I'm trying to get it out there by the end of the month, by the end of July, 1st of August, if I can. Okay. Got it. Amen. Amen. Well, IXL Oklahoma is me. It's actually I period, X period, L period. Yes. (laughs) Yes. I period, X period, L period is in between Highway Interstate 44 and 40. Um, That is Uh, in between. We we take um, Interstate 40 East. Yes. Um near is it towards Sami yeah. and um yeah, that direction. Oh, yes, Omogi. And they said estimated population yeah. is between fifty nine, fifty one people around that there. Yeah. Like I said, you if you blink you'll miss it. But actually <laughs> let me let me say this though. It was more than fifty one people when they lived there. A lot of times okay. people grow up in these nice small towns, but they get these big jobs because they have these nice degrees, and they leave the towns that they grew up in. So okay. it would be good for somebody to have the idea, hey, I'm going to go back and build it up and make it a wonderful place again to live like it was when I was there. And so hopefully I'll have the opportunity to do that. Got it. And from my understanding, it's still a predominantly African-American area. I'm sorry? That particular area is still predominantly African-American. It's still predominantly African-American area? Yes, predominantly African-American and also Native American. Yes. And that would be the Cherokee tribe. From what I'm understanding, the Cherokee tribe, Cherokee, and it's about maybe Blackfoot. Um, yeah, they're all you know in there because what is that? The Trail of Tears came through there, something like that. You know, we got to read our history books because actually <laughs> that does impact my family. Amen. And they're they're 138 miles from Greenville. Oklahoma. That's very interesting. Yeah, my family still has property there. My grandfather's family had property that's still in the family, thank God. And my grandmother's uh, family had property there that's still in the family. And so that's one thing I appreciate by my family. Some uh, some of them are listening to this uh, radio interview. I appreciate the fact that they have kept that land. And so mm-hmm. now we need to figure out what to do with it. Not sell it necessarily, but do something to improve the land. Um, I know that we had cows on it, um, but driving back and forth was tough. So they moved the cows to an area closer, but they did keep the land. So I do appreciate that. Absolutely. Well, I can give you give you all some good ideas. Number one, if you're going to, you know, get to the next level, you want to create your own your own businesses and have it to where you expand. Um, population grows by base if people come back and right. and do it, just like um, Black Wall Street. That's in Greenville, Oklahoma. You know, people came together and they came together in droves to make a difference. So. Best thing I would tell you all is to buy up as much property as you all you guys have. Then I would 
start building. I'll get involved in legislating from city council to mayor to sheriff to everything. Next thing you know, the family is in every walk of life. Next thing you know, you you build and you make a beacon. And then next thing you know, the governor of Oklahoma says, you know, we need to start flooding some more money into y'all neighborhoods because y'all are growing. And when you start growing, exactly. that means you can expand. In my book, Calvin, I do have a, just a short story about our our uh, family had property in Texas that actually had oil on it. They wow. were paid five hundred. They were paid five hundred dollars for it. So basically, what? it was taken out for months. Yes, and and those people made I don't know how much millions, billions off of that land. So I, one thing I want people to know, life does have many twists and turns, ups and downs, challenges, as well as triumphs. And I say this in my bio, the best thing to do is to embrace the good and not let the bad keep you down. A lot of times our families went through some things that we had no control over. The best thing to do is to stick together, stick together and then start all, keep starting all over. Don't let failures keep you down. Keep trying, picking up, and families need to stick together. That's one thing some families are not doing. We need to stick together. Amen, amen. Well, we we definitely want you to to people to stick together with you. I want people to know how can they get in contact with you, Miss Riley. Uh, my my email is r i l d r o n. 315 at gmail.com. Fantastic. Now, for those that are listening to us right now over the phone, you can definitely unmute yourself. If you have a question for our guest or for myself, please tell us who you are, where you're calling from before we get our next guest on because I want Miss Riley to be encouraged because she says she's going to have a lot of family calling in on this, on this line. So, hey, definitely unmute yourself. Tell us who you are and where you're calling from. So I'm giving – you all a couple minutes. So anybody on the line want to give a shout out or do anything like that? Have any questions? All right, going once, going twice. All right. Well, hey, definitely want to thank y'all for listening in. Um, but I want Miss Riley to give you words of encouragement now. I want to let you know that the vision that God has given you to to keep your family's property together, keep that instilled into you. Pass it down to your kids. You know, keep buying up that property. I promise you this. If you all do what I'm telling you to do, not just buy up property, but get involved or want to become the mayor of the town, city council, those other things, you can change your whole legacy. Next in the next 10 years from now, your family set apart, and then nobody else can stop you. Just want to give you that words of encouragement, man. But, uh, but we thank you, Miss Riley, for calling in, and uh, thank you I so thank much you much all for having me on. No problem, man. And like I said again, if you ever want to come on, just reach out to me, and we get connected with you. I promise you, okay? All right, then. I appreciate it. All righty. Well, thank you so much. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, you just heard live here the Logan Power Show. You, know, you heard Miss Riley uh, live here. She was talking about her book. Please get that. Please get that when it definitely is released in the next couple of weeks. Well, we got our third guest as we're moving fast here in the Logan Power Show. This gentleman here, he's without further ado, doing his great things. One and only, Doctor Tracy P. Washington. How you doing, sir? Hey, I'm doing well. How are you doing this evening? Fantastic. Glad to have you here in the Logan Power Show. Well, hey, ladies thank and gentlemen, you so much for the invite. I really appreciate it. Oh, definitely. Thanks for having us. Now, Dr. Washington has a lot of traits. He's a healthcare executive, motivational speaker, author, entrepreneur, professor, and entrepreneur who collaborates with federal and state agencies, healthcare organizations, CEOs, and community leaders to bring cutting-edge professional 
backslash person strategic development and health and wellness expertise to Virginia and Washington, D.C. area. Dr. Washington, you a busy man with all the, all the knowledge and all the power. Tell us about how you got started and how you became the doctor and how you get involved in making all these great ideas. Talk, talk about yourself, sir. Oh, okay. Well, well, you told me I had about six hours to talk, right? <laughs> I got you. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. But you know, it. it I. It, I was been blessed my whole life. I, I'll tell you. Just start off with that. Uh, you, 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 you ask a question like, how did I become a doctor? And I, I can tell you, it was a long journey. Uh, to begin with, my mother was an educator. Uh, growing up, she taught special education, so she, she was my rock. So you know, I, I, I think I got my passion for education and for teaching from her. But uh, believe it or not, I, I, I came into the Air Force in 1993. Um, you know, just wanted to leave uh, Albany, Georgia, small town where I'm from. I uh, love it, you know, if anybody's listening from Georgia. But, uh, you know, wanted to get away and see the world. But, but college was not on my plate, I can tell you that. I didn't even, you know, when I first joined, I, I, I didn't even get the GI Bill. You know, I said, hey, that's not for me. I'm just going to kind of hang out and ride around. But, you know, about around, I would say, 27 years old, uh, I had a lot of mentors, uh, a lot of uh, guys and women as well that saw something in me that I couldn't see in myself. And basically one of my supervisors, I'll never forget, Mr. Uh, Major Thomas Hughes, he said, look, if you don't go to school and start getting your education, uh, in the military we call it a firewall five, uh, the best uh, valuation you can get, he said, you're not going to get that. So you need to go ahead and start your education. So that's what I did when I was stationed in uh, Honolulu, Hawaii. And I never looked back. I got my uh, undergrad, wow. I mean, my associate's degree. I, I got my uh, uh, undergrad. I did it in justice administration, went straight into my master's program and ended up getting a dual master's, one in uh, healthcare administration and one in uh, human resources. And went again uh, to, to finish out my doctorate, and that was a dream my mother had. And uh, she passed away in 1998, didn't get a chance to fulfill that dream. So uh, I, I felt honored to be able to fulfill that for her and our family as well, too. So finished my doctorate in uh, 2013 and never looked back since, I'll tell you. And it's been a blessing and an honor to, uh, to have done that. And that's the short version of it, because I can tell you there were many obstacles and uh, a couple of deployments to Afghanistan and Iraq during that time. I can remember typing papers on back of a Black Hawk uh, going to uh, <laughs> uh, Baghdad, you know. So it, 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 was, it was worth it, though, I'll tell you. It, and it's, it's been a blessing, and it's helped me a lot in my career uh, as I moved fo- through the Air Force and now that I'm retired from the Air Force as well. Amen. Now, being a healthcare executive, what do we need to do to sort of I guess, help out with those that maybe, since you have a lot of knowledge of how we can get those maybe covered, um, how we can make a difference in our healthcare profession. I know a lot of times, yes. even though we do, people say, I still got insurance, or those say, I don't got insurance, or I'm trying to find the right fit for me and my family, or if you got yes. a business and you want to, small, medium, large, and you want to, hire employees and you want to give them the right benefits, how can we make a difference in that realm? Because that topic has not gone away. It's still out there. Healthcare is still a problem. You are absolutely right, and I'm glad you asked that question. And, and you know, that's what I've really dedicated my, my whole uh, life after the military to, which is health and wellness, and also uh, the health of not just uh, my employees, but also the health and wellness of our communities uh, in Virginia and D.C. as well, too. And you, I, would, I would encourage any entrepreneur, any business owner to have the understanding, and I know health care is expensive, and I know <laughs> the, the tremendous cost that it has, and we can go on a whole long conversation about that and how it can be lowered. But, you know, uh, a healthy employee is a happy employee. And if you can get that person and get them, whether it be with uh, Medicaid subsidized insurance companies and things such as that, or even if they have to do co-pays into the company, it will pay you dividends in the long run. I will tell you, that person will be happier. They're going to be staying at work. They're not going to be calling off. And especially with our single parents who may have to take care of their children while they're sick from communicable diseases and things, these things can 
can be prevented. And I'm huge on prevention. And a lot of times I go out and I teach about prevention uh, for our mm-hmm. community, especially African American uh, communities around my area. And also with the Wealthy Collective that I'm a member of as well, uh, co-founder of that group as well, too. And that's our whole premises is talking about health and wellness and how to take care of ourselves so we can be more productive citizens. Amen. Amen. And I thank you for giving us that information. I know a lot of times what we do is, um, you know, we both military veterans ourselves. You know, we both doing yeah. entrepreneur stuff, and you have a lot of, Knowledge, because you on the, you know, I didn't list this out. I I would love to have been an officer to make a difference, but unfortunately, never. It was tough getting in. It's tough getting the military is one thing, but tough becoming an officer is a whole other type of realm. Um, Absolutely. So, what is it that we can do to help? I guess betterment our community that that is that is going through some of those health issues. Because a lot of times yeah. when we say, okay, well, that's a poor neighborhood, well, if you do, uh, you know, get, look over the landscape, you say, okay, well, let's look at the water, the grass. You know, their grass ain't right because there ain't enough water coming in there to touch that soil. Or you say, Absolutely. okay, where's the, near, near, where's the nearest grocery store? The nearest grocery mm-hmm. store is about maybe five, six, seven, eight miles. Well, has everyone got a yeah. car? No, everybody don't got a car. You know, public transportation mm-hmm. is not the, the best. So if you say you want to yes. go get some groceries, you're not going to Uber it because you're going to spend about a good money in Ubering just to go from Absolutely. point A to point B just for that trip. So what can we do to sort of fix the issues, not just from an, the employer standpoint, just for the community since you have a good knowledge of what we need to make a better place? How can we fix that gap in the okay. community? You- well, well, you know, uh, let me touch on two things. The first thing is I was a 25-year enlisted man myself, too, so I, I definitely, you know, and, and, and wouldn't look back and go into the office of the world just to let you know that piece. But anyway, uh, <laughs> Got the, the, first thing, the first thing that I would talk about is with health and wellness is the power of voting. And, and that's Got where it. people it, – it, it's a missing piece in, in our communities because what a lot of folks and a lot of people don't understand is and for us to change our – neighborhoods, just like with the issues you talked about with the no grocery stores, like being seven, eight, ten miles away. Um, you have liquor stores, uh, cash uh, places, and bodegas or convenience stores that only sell like junk food, and these people don't have the options. But you can change that by changing your local officials, your mayors, your city councilmen, and your things such as that. So it's important, first and foremost, to vote for people who are going to bring health initiatives into those neighborhoods. That's what's going. To, that's the, the first part that I encourage everybody to do and be in par, a part of. And people say, "Well, I don't care because it's not really affecting me." But it does. It does affect you when you don't go and cast that vote, especially for your local election, not the president's and all those things. Let's start at the local level. But then, too, once we get past that piece, um, when we, there are ways that we can do healthier choices. As well, too, even if we're in a situation where we only have, like, maybe a small convenience store that has, it, like, say, a 7-Eleven, if you go in there just for an example, I know they do have a section that, and it's more expensive <laughs> than the grocery stores, but you can get grapes. You can get uh, a small parts of vegetables and things such as that. It's about making those healthy choices, and it's about portion sizes mm-hmm. as well, too. Even if you can go, like, say, if you have the McDonald's down the street or the Popeye's, or whatever fast food restaurant of your choice, instead of getting that large meal, look at the baked items that they have. Look at the salads that they have. Look at, you know, your portion size. Instead of getting the large size, get the kid size uh, meals. Mm-hmm. These are all things that we can do to start uh, bettering ourselves, losing weight. Because as you, we both know that uh, heart disease and also uh, diabetes, uh, high cholesterol, high blood pressure, all these things are, are, are killing our communities left and right, and, and a lot of these are attributed to directly to people's diets and their portion sizes that they're wow. doing. Also, water is important as well, too. Instead of drinking, like, the Kool-Aid, the Gatorade, and things, you could drink water, even if it's tap water as well, too. A lot of people say, well, that's bad. I don't like it. You can boil it for a little bit. Boil the tap water uh, for a while, and then put the water inside the refrigerator and let it cool off. These are all things that people can do when you don't have it easy access to, uh, you know, more nutritious-type stores 
and things such as that. And it's, but again, it's all about you know making those healthy choices and going in and saying, hey, I want to make a difference in my body, and that's important because if the you know the engine of your car is not working, your car can look fine. You can have a Bentley, you can have a Lamborghini, but if that engine is not working, what's going to happen? You're not going to move, and it's just uh, half a million dollars worth of junk. So the same thing goes with our body as well too. So what we put into our body is uh, it's, a, it's almost a spiritual thing. It's about taking care of ourselves, taking care of our mind as well too, and nourishing the temple that uh, our, 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 our our higher power or God has given us. Amen. Amen. Well, Dr. Washington, you have a plethora of knowledge that, you know, we definitely want to always, you know, give out. And we always want you again. I'm going to definitely have you come back here on the show the end part of the month. I don't know if you're free, the end part of July, yeah. and let you just talk mm-hmm. more about some other things that we need to tackle in this community. But what do you what are some what is one thing you want to see changed when it comes to the United States of America? I know you you're a big health buff. Um yes. motivational speaker. What do you want to see change yourself personally? Something you say, I gotta see this change in my community. Hmm. I gotta see one thing that I would change is the betterment of public education. Um got it. I, I just feel as though that is the key and one of the major keys and one of the major uh, disconnects that we have. Um, Again, like I said, my mother was a public school teacher, and and I saw, like, teachers who truly care and teachers who truly give amongst themselves and give out of their pockets to help their students, but they're underpaid. They're uh, understaffed. The (laughs) The school systems are behind when we talk about education, and then, and that's the start when we're trying to grow our communities. We have to be educated. We have to understand where we were, where we're going, and where we're, you know, where we are now, and where we're going into the future. So, for me, if I could change one thing, the public school systems across America for all all neighborhoods, all communities would be revamped and more money put into those versus some other uh, less important items. I would say besides our children, because our children are the future. They're going to be ones that are going to be taking care of this country in the next 20 to 30 years. So it's imperative that we educate them, get them as smart as they can and intelligent as we can, and help them catch up with other students across the world, because we're lagging behind in the United States. uh, I mean, you can find that in statistics uh, pretty much everywhere, that, uh, that we're not, you know, our school systems aren't the best in the world. I mean, we're ranking, you know, sometimes on some scales, and some statistics I've seen number four, number seven, and number ten in the world. So that would be my uh, one thing that I would change. Well, you, you're a smart man, Dr. Washington. Now tell people, how can they get in contact with you? Uh, several ways to get in contact with me. They can get in contact with me by my email. It's Tracy, T-R-A-C-Y, dot P, as in Paul, dot Washington, at gmail, dot com. Uh, my Instagram is Doctor, so dr. Dot t Washington underscore m3 underscore CEO, and I also have a private Facebook page called the Forum of Kings. It's 1100 African American males where we talk about all sorts of issues, topics uh, from politics to nutrition to spirituality. So you can catch me on there as well too, and that's open to any African American male from age 14 to 114. So please just look me up anyway. Uh, possible, uh, and reach out and, hey, let's get the conversation started and keep it going. Hey, man. Well, Dr. Washington, hey, you know, you got my number. Get in contact with me some more. We're going to get you in the end part here of July so that we can rock yeah. it out. Um, and we just thank you so much for coming here on the Logan Power Show, sir. All right. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. You have a blessed one. How about you too? Bye-bye. Oh. Uh, all right, ladies and gentlemen, you just heard Dr. Tracy Washington here in the Logan Power Show. And now, without further ado, our final guest, she's the one and only Miss Val McLeod. How you doing, ma'am? Got to see if she's here. Waiting for Miss Val to come on. But, hey, for those who are listening to us, if you are a, a listener listening in, you can unmute yourself, tell us who you are and where you are calling from. Um, so please unmute yourself, tell us who you are and where you are calling from. All right.
right, well, he, I'm looking for it, uh, looking right now, and see if she is on the line with us. Just waiting for Miss Val to come on in, and that way we can uh, get it going, get it started. Miss Val, you here? And for those who are Hello. on the line, if you want to unmute yourself. Miss Val, you, is that you? I'm here. Can you hear me? Yes. Hello. How you doing? Okay. Yes, ma'am. Can you hear me? Okay. Yes, 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 yes. I'm so sorry. I was enjoying <laughs> Dr. Washington so much I forgot to unmute myself because I didn't want, I was mindful <laughs> not to unmute when I came in. Uh, so I don't, you know, because I was like, wow, this is good stuff. And then when you yes, called ma'am. me, so yes, sir. Hey, happy Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> Happy Saturday to you. How's everything? Oh my God, it's just it, 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 if it gets any better, I think I'll just translate like Enoch. Just poof, I'll just be with God. It just gets better and better <laughs> each moment. Amen. God is faithful. Yes, Amen. He is. So good. Thank you yes, so much for having me God. on. Oh no, thank you so much. I'm honored for all, all y'all guests. Y'all are way, way above on my pay grade. Y'all are some phenomenal people. You have some. A lot of accolades. Um, I'm just reading of how you were featured on People Magazine, ABC, Good Morning America, for your achievements. Uh, the founder and CEO of Val You Life More LLC, inspired and personally mentored by Dr. Maya Angelou. Um, you have an accomplished leader, published author, award-winning speaker, management consultant, and sought-after corporate brand partner. She shares her wealth of wisdom of death of life experience to ignite and increase personal and organizational value. She looks for every opportunity to offer power, power filled perspectives, process, programs, and products that created added value, abundance, and love. Well, ma'am, I, I love your thing. We have Vets Lives Matter. And I'm a veteran okay. myself. So tell us about yourself because, you know, you're a busy lady. And I don't know if people want to get to know more about you. Tell who's the, who's the lady with all these great accolades. Who is Miss Val? Well, let me first and foremost, sir, just thank you so much uh, for your service. Thank Dr. Washington uh, and all the veterans and their families and the active uh, duty uh, service members who sacrifice so much so that we can live the lives that we live in this great country. So thank you for your service and your sacrifice, and thank you for having me tonight. Mm-hmm. Oh, yes, so, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Uh, so uh, who I am, I'm, 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 listen, I'm from the inner city of Miami, uh, and I have just uh, lived uh, a most unconventional journey uh, throughout my life, and I was born with what one would uh, call, Mr. Logan, an insatiable appetite. My mother would always tell the story that even as a newborn, she would give me eight ounces of, of milk, and I would scream until she gave me another eight ounces of milk. So as a newborn, <laughs> I would eat two. Are you laughing? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> so, yeah. That's a good one. <laughs> I know, but it's true. It's so, 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 so that people get, keep in context. So people, you know, I mean, and there are a lot of reasons why people become morbidly obese. And I was just born with a gene that just loved to eat. And eating, I did. I just continue. And, and of course, you know, I'm not saying that it never became an, an emotional uh, eating thing, because it certainly do. Because once you, you know, begin to uh, isolate yourself and, and, and become kind of ostracized from society because you're overweight, then you turn to food as your comfort. Uh, so it has this, yes. you know, kind of a reciprocal, cyclical thing where you're eating uh, um uh, to to feel better and that eat, eat, eating so much you know puts on weight and you feel worse well then you got to feel better because you feel bad so it's that it's that kind of vicious cycle and I just uh, put on weight and put on weight my entire life um, uh, Logan until I was over six hundred pounds in my early twenties. Wow, yeah, because uh, when you had put that six hundred pounds, I said that's that's that that's not easy. And how were you able to lose all that weight and keep it moving forward? Because normally when you say 600 pounds, people understand you have a, there's a lifetime challenge, like people who said they've lost weight or being at 600 pounds, and that's not easy. 
So how are you able to do it and overcome and get yourself down and wait? Okay, so that, that again, is uh, very unconventional, and I'm not one uh, who, who who just steadily, you know, released weight and got rid of it and got healthy and got fit. I'm telling you, I say I've, I've, I've gotten rid of over 3,000 pounds. Why? Because I've lost and gained and gained and lost these same, you know, hundreds of pounds over and over again because that's part of the cycle, and that's really a part of the breakthrough awareness, uh, Mr. Logan, that I want to share tonight, that diets don't work. And they're the biggest sabotage when you're using a, a wow. diet-only approach uh, or you're looking for a quick fix uh, uh, because there's mm-hmm. so many factors that 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 uh, contribute to why we are more inclined uh, to eat in the way that we eat in this country, in the West, and then we end up having so many co- uh, co- consequences and uh, and. Um, uh, and neg- adverse experiences uh, from being morbidly obese or, or overweight. And, of course, Dr. Washington went into a lot of them. In fact, I'm just here reading an, an article from uh, June 19th, Juneteenth nonetheless, okay, uh, that talks about the growing epidemic of diabetes. So, you know, so there's so many factors. So with me, I, 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 I – if you name a diet, I don't care if, if it was a diet of, you know, of like eating uh, corn five times a day, which is absurd, but I've been on literally every diet that existed because you're constantly trying to seek the right answer. And anytime you have a caloric deficit, I don't care what you're on. If you're, if you're taking in less calories, then, uh, uh, then, then if, if, you're, if you're burning less calories than you're taking in, then you're going to release some weight, you know, whether it's including exercise or caloric restriction or, you know, low fat or, you know, there's so many different uh, programs that you can put yourself on and, and release the weight. But if there is not uh, a, a very, very critical component that I want to go into, if there is not a transformation from within, and I don't even mean mind power at this point, but if there's not something done on a cellular level to help your body to stop craving sugar, to stop craving carbohydrates, to stop craving fast foods and processed foods, this thing is very much uh, uh, almost like um, uh, almost like feeding the body something so addictive, like if you're giving it crack. And once those things get it, get into your body on a cellular level, it craves itself more and more and more. So I would diet for a little while, then I would jump off and, you know, gain a, a few pounds back. But then, you know, then I would get off and then, you know, get on track, whether it was Weight Watchers, whether it was uh, uh, liquid diets or, you know, whether it was something medically supervised. Just by the grace of God, I never went back up uh, 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 over like 400 pounds. That, that sounds absurd. I mean, I say to people all the time because I live in a judge-free zone, and I tell people mm-hmm. I have released more weight than most people weigh. So don't let nobody uh, trip you out if you have 50 pounds to lose or 100 pounds to lose. Child, it, it, it can happen. So release the the, uh, the the notion that there is not a solution out there. So I want to. You know, as we talk tonight, get into what some of those solutions, that's really been a part of my breakthrough awareness. Even since I was on People Magazine and Good Morning America and all that in 2014, uh, I had a very, very tragic family loss in uh, 2015, Mm -hmm. and I was in a three-year cocoon of grief. And what did I do? I went right back to my, you know, my my go-to space, and that was eating because I didn't care about taking care of myself. I didn't care about walking the three or four miles a day that I uh, have resumed doing now and I have been doing for years. And uh, so I went back to those negative uh, uh, habits. But fortunately, thank you, God, I have learned what what I learned over the process, and I know how to now on a healthy way release that weight without being drastic, you know, without um, uh, uh, depriving yourself of every single thing, you know, that you might enjoy, but just giving your body the nutrition, that's the key. You give your body the nutrition it wants, and the body will begin to come into alignment from the inside out, and you cannot stop yourself from releasing weight. And from your body, you know, uh, uh, being able to, you know, come into balance with your blood pressure, with your cholesterol, with your A1C, you know, uh, so a, that that's a, a big part of you know, what I wanted to uh, talk about a little further about tonight. Mm-hmm. 
Okay, absolutely. Well, hey, the floor is yours. Talk about what okay. is it that we need to focus on so that we can tackle this in this, in this time frame here on the segment. Well, okay. Well, well, uh, one of the most critical things that we have to do is to understand that, again, uh, the book that I'm writing right now, um, Mr. Logan, is Exodus from Dieting. Exodus, like breaking out, getting free from dieting, and other self-destructive decisions or choices, turning your shame into strength and success. So that's the book that I'm working on now. And it's just a breakthrough awareness of, of, of about nutrition. What does your body really need and want? And what uh, I have found over the last five years is that uh, our approach in the West uh, to uh, being able to uh, get healthier is through deprivation. Uh, stop this, stop that, stop the other thing. But for people like me, now you may have some people who are fitness people who don't, who are, who are not binge eaters, who are not, you know, uh, have the issues, you know, who crave the wrong foods all the time, who, who can set their minds to, you know, to to enter a uh, on a on, on a plan and stick to it. Okay, amen. That's not me, and there are many people like me who is a struggle when you try to do a, a deprivation based approach. Uh, uh, so that you like your it, 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 ice cream is, is is like screaming your name, or you see a chocolate bar and it's like a, literally a tug of war. Uh, so what I mm. uh, came to find out is that that is not happening because of a weakness within a person. As I was just saying, sugar, refined sugar, it is. I mean, crack. It's like it's it's it's, it's the biggest drug on the planet, but to tell a person who is addicted to, and I, and I know that's a strong word, but uh, who's dependent, if, if, if addicted is too strong, we'll say dependent, or who just has been in the habit of eating like that the entire life, to come in and say, with a whole list of stuff to cut this out, is not really realistic for a strong segment uh, of, of, of Americans. Like in, in this particular uh, um, article I was telling you about, says 30.3 million Americans are overweight. I mean, I, I, it, yeah. well, uh, no, excuse me, morbidly obese. So it's like, I mean, so the, the so there are many, there, so there are more struggling with weight issues. And then we're talking about a multi-billion, probably trillion-dollar industry with try this, try that, try the other thing, uh, uh, and 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 it, and it's not uh, meeting the need for so many people. So here's the thing that I found out: when you give your body good nutrition, then the body heals itself. Now, there's a couple of things that I expressly want to encourage uh, your 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 audience to uh, to to try. And you know what? Before you even try, just read about it. Just read about mm-hmm. it, and you'll be able to see this is research-based, scientifically proven. Why it's not pervasively known throughout, you know, uh, uh, the uh, uh, in in our in our culture and in our society, I don't know. But the, I'm just always excited about these opportunities to, you know, let it be known and to herald it out. And that is matcha green tea, M A T C H A green tea. Uh, and uh, and mm-hmm. all matcha green teas are not equal. I want to be very very clear about that. You know they're, they're not all created equal. And just like anything else, you could have you could go to you know, uh, um, just say Neiman Marcus and get certain kind of face creams, and you could go to the dollar store and you better not put that on your face, okay? <laughs> so because of what's in it. So likewise with matcha, it has to be an organic. Japanese ceremonial grade, and when I tell you the, I mean, like I said, just Google the health benefits of matcha green tea, and you'll see that it is empirical evidence is irrefutable, Mr. Logan, that it'll help to lower your cholesterol and your blood pressure, that it'll help your digestion and regularity, which helps you release those toxins, and part of that release uh, uh, is, is what's detoxing your body naturally. I'm talking about without making any other changes, just get, put add to your diet. Don't forget about taking away because as you give your body what it wants, it will naturally begin to uh, 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 
stop desiring and craving the things that are not good for it. And it'll, it, this mantra will give you just this burst of energy, and you'll go from being, like, lethargic, you know, to just ready to live your best life and no more fatigue, and you're just feeling just uh, fantastic. I mean, it just it's so many positive health benefits. Uh, but here again, I just want to in, in, encourage uh, everyone, you know, just to be very careful uh, uh, about and just do your research to make sure you're getting a matcha that is pure, you know, that, that, that is a quality uh, a product, and it's absolutely phenomenal. So let me pause there to see if you have any questions about that. Well, I mean, from that, you know, uh, the different teas that are out there now, where can we, you know, a lot of times when you mention certain names, where can we get it? I know sometimes with certain teas, certain things are not available everywhere. Where have you been able to find it at so where people can actually get it and put it into their household? Okay, well, this is what I love about matcha when you get a quality matcha. Not only is it, is it available, if you, if, you, if you get a trusted one, and I'm going to say, I, I, I have first, it's available, it's, it's affo- affordable. I mean, you can get matcha for like an easy, like a half of a teaspoon. This is a quality one now. I'm not talking about no junk from, I'm going to call no store names, but some of the big groceries <laughs> out. Yeah, no, don't go there. No, no, don't do it. And so, so uh, what? There, there, there's a company in uh, Corpus Christi, Texas, and I've been using her matcha so, and I love it so much that I'm going to start private labeling her matcha very soon. But meanwhile, until I do that, I don't sell it, but I support it. So I want to encourage everyone. I hope you just blow up her business, and 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 she even has a coupon code because I have told so many people about her matcha because it's good. And I'm talking about from the first taste of it, you're going to see the difference. So I'm going to spell it out for you. It's matcha again, M-A-T-C-H, Konomi, K-O-N-O-M-I. It's a Japanese word. It means pure. So matcha, M-A-T-C-H. Konomi, K-O-N-O-M-I dot com, and you'll want to get, just try it for the first time. You can get a, 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 a tin uh, for like a month a, a month uh, servings because um, you only need, like I said, a half a, a half a teaspoon or a teaspoon a day, first thing in the morning before you eat anything. Uh, right after you maybe, you know, do your, 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 your hygiene, just make a cup of tea or put it in a smoothie or I don't care how you just get it in your body first thing, and you will immediately see the benefits of it. And for those who order uh, matcha konomi uh, 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 from uh, from her from uh, uh, order from matcha konomi, uh, she is offering a discount for those who I refer an eighteen percent plus free shipping, and and you end up barely spending twenty dollars which is just like to make a $20 investment on something that's going to change your life. Hello. It's like, I mean, it's it's, it's God. It's a blessing. And that, and the, and the, and the coupon code that you put in at checkout is value 18 V A L the letter U 18. So matcha konomi.com at checkout, put V as in Val a is an apple, L is in love, the letter U is in uh, unique, the number 18, which in Hebrew is the number of life, high, it means uh, number of life, um, uh, and, uh, and, and, and go ahead and try it. And I'm telling you, once you try it, and especially I heard Dr. Washington talk about his, his group for men. Okay, brothers, let me tell you something. Uh, I, I'm going gonna gonna to keep it clean and keep it nice here. Brothers really do want to get some matcha because it helps to purify their bodies so their their bodies perform better. Can I say it like that? Okay. Yes, ma'am. Perform better. Performance. Performance <laughs> helps the body. A lot of times we it's those remedies that will help us and to be able to do so. So definitely want to get that. Now, how can people get in contact with you, ma'am, to connect with what you got going on because you are a busy lady? How can people get in contact with you? Well, uh, well and, and I know, and maybe you can have it back on, Mr. Logan, so we can talk a little bit about a Vets Lives Matter Now uh, initiative, sure. which is this huge, huge uh, veteran 
advocacy uh, commitment that uh, we have launched, and we are super excited about just being able to say and show our veterans how much we appreciate, how much we value, appreciate, and love them for their service. And so we are uh, are, are launching, rolling out several major initiatives, huge, just a groundswell, a tidal wave of support from corporations mm-hmm. around the nation. So we definitely want to talk about that, and we're culminating it uh, next year with the March on Washington, March for Our Vets 2020, just to say thank you. Uh, and then not just say it with our mouths, but say it with our actions, because far too many veterans are falling between the cracks uh, uh, and not getting the services that you so tremendously deserve. So we're going to help to kind of bring more synergy uh, into those spaces so that we, we are stronger and more effective uh, uh, together. Uh, so you can reach me at hello, H E L L O, at Val McLeod, that's my email, dot com, V is in victory, A L McLeod, M C L E O D, uh, like Mary McLeod Bethune. So Val McLeod dot com, hello at Val McLeod dot com. Uh, in fact, my website, valmcloud.com, will be fully rebranded and relaunched uh, in the next 48 to 72 hours. So you can connect me uh, there at valmcloud.com and on uh, Facebook at, uh, at valmcloud or uh, val you like more and on all the social platforms, so Instagram, uh, uh, Twitter, Facebook, Value Life More, and also Vets Lives Matter Now, also on all those platforms. So, <laughs> Amen, amen. So we definitely going to get you on on July 27th, you and Dr. Washington back. I know our listeners are going to definitely want to hear you all again. So we can definitely get you guys back on on July 27th. That way we can kick it off even more so to a higher level here in the Logan Power Show. Um, I just thank you for coming on. You didn't have to, but I just thank you for coming on to our show. Just giving a plethora of information. I know every listener who's been listening in, I know their life has been elated just for what you've been doing on today. So we thank you, and we're looking forward. If you're available, are you available July 27 to come back on and talk more about this? Oh, absolutely. I just want to offer a challenge out there. I want as many people as hear this to have your matcha. That's like two and a half weeks away. And I want to hear some testimonials on how much better you're feeling. So I've just written it down on my calendar. So I will be with you again on the 27th, and I look forward to that. And thanks again so much, Mr. Mr. Logan, for the opportunity to uh, to connect and to share. Oh, yes, man. We thank you again. And ladies and gentlemen, we have Ms. Valley Live here at the Logan Power Show. We want to thank all our guests who have blessed us here at the Logan Power Show. We want to give a shout-out to the CEO, the producer, Ms. Kenny Robinson, and her faithfulness in Nation Radio family. Hey, again, go to our website today, www.thelogampowershow.us. Get connected on our website Get connected to what we are doing. I know we will be in North Charleston, South Carolina, here on July the 20th. Uh, so definitely want to get connected with us. You want to be a guest on our show for our television portion, live on the camera. Get connected with us today. Well, family, before we go, we want to lift everybody in prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, we want to thank you, Father, for every listener who's listening in. And for those that are on the replay, that their lives have been transformed and changed. We thank you, Father, for those that are listening to us right now, that the that, Father, that right now you are giving them some fiber, you've given them energy, and they're fired up and ready to go with you. Father, that they're the lenders, not the, not the bars, they're above and not beneath. And we just praise you and thank you, Father, for what you are doing. Look at this nation, look at our elected officials, from our president on down, our military members, yes. fire department, police department, those that are homeless, don't have a place to stay to our teachers to you, Father. We look at for all our social workers. And, Father, we just praise you and thank you. All of that great prayer in Jesus' name, amen, amen. Amen. Hey, you just heard me live. Amen. You just heard me live with the Logan Power Amen. um, Amen, amen, and amen. Well, hey, if you ever want to sow into our ministry, go to our website today, www.the. Here to make a difference. Um. I thank you all who are listening to us. But before we go, if you are on the line and you want to tell us who you are and where you are calling from, 
We always don't want don't you want to feel left out. So definitely, if you want to unmute yourself, tell us who you are and where you're calling from. Anybody in the line? All right, going once, going twice. All right, well, hey. Hello. Hello. Shout out to everybody who. Yes, hello. Who's on the call? Hello. Hello. Can you, who's on the call? Eddie Baker, Oklahoma City. How you doing, Mr. Baker? How's everything, sir? Uh, everything's going fine. Enjoyed the call. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sir, we we enjoyed you, sir. Thank you for listening in, and um, definitely listen to us again if you have some time. Okay. All right. Thank you, sir. No problem. God bless you. All the way from Oklahoma, you, Mr. Eddie Baker. Yes, sir. Eddie Baker, pa- pastor of the Christian Faith Missionary Baptist Church. Oh, that was my, my daughter. God that was my daughter, you. Debbie, talking with you. Oh, absolutely. Well, hey, again, Pastor, you know, um, she has my information. If you ever want us to connect with you to come out to your neck of the woods, we can work something out. Let us know. Uh, you All know, right. hey, God, God has to have us on the move. So we thank you so much for listening in, Pastor. We appreciate you. All right. Let me know when you're coming, man, and I'll bake a cake. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm all. I'm all, all right. for it. I'm all for it. <laughs> yes, sir. God bless you. Well, hey, we having fun here at the Logan Power Show. Pastor said he's gonna bake us a cake, so you know that's gonna happen, right? You got, you know, we excited because that's a reward coming our way. I told y'all we're nationwide, worldwide. We on television. We on radio. Hey, Alations Radio. We thank you for what you have done. Hey, our show has been, has been growing, and we are looking to, to to really to take down this world one state at a time, one city at a time. So we thank you all who are listening to us. Yes, sir. No, I say that's, that, that's what we got to do, take it down one city at a time. Yes, sir. Absolutely, Pastor. So without further ado, y'all, Hey, I thank y'all for listening. We will be back on on July 27th. We'll have two of our guests returning back on. Hey, if anybody who you know want to get connected with us, hey, reach us right now. You can email us at the Logan Power Show at gmail.com. That is our email address. Hey, our website, www.thelogan.powershow.com. Dot US, the Logan Power Show. Dot US. That's our website. You can connect with us, email us. Hey, we're looking to make a difference. That's all the time I got. My name is Calvin Logan, the Logan Power Show, nationwide, worldwide. Hey, we love y'all. We'll see you next two weeks. Miss Kimmy Kim, take us out. God bless y'all, and favor of God is on your life. Love you, family. Bless you, man. Father paid the cost. cost. No, I'm not perfect. God just forgave me. Got a new swag. Praising Christ like I'm crazy. This my Christ swag. Yeah. My Christ swag. Yeah. Uh-huh. This my Christ swag. Okay. My Christ swag. Yeah. This my Christ swag. Yeah. My Christ swag. Yeah. Uh-huh. This my Christ swag. My Christ swag. Yeah. Yeah. I'm from the streets. South of the arch, man Where I used to drink, roll up and used to spark, man Now I got my head straight Shining like a million bucks Christ elevated me Going past the ceiling, bro St. Louis did it God Squad t-shirt Homie, how you doing? Pleased to meet you, this my rebirth Addicted to the word It's pumping through my artery Faith on the meal The swag is a part of me Now my glow bright Souls been redeemed Covered in the blood No shower, cause I'm clean Done playing games Rid of the Xbox, almost flatline, but Christ made my chest pop, walked on the edge, the devil made me wobble, Jesus took the wheel, fast forward, full throttle, still in the hood, got that street slang, mixed with the spirit, it's a G thing.
deep, high, tall, tall. Just the way I walk. walk. Been set free, cause my father paid the cost. cost. No, I'm not perfect. God just forgave me. Got a new swag. Praising Christ like I'm crazy. This my Christ swag. Yeah. My Christ swag. Yeah. Uh-huh. This my Christ swag. Okay. Yeah. My Christ swag. God yeah. squad, this my bruh. Christ swag. Yeah. My Christ swag. Yeah. Uh-huh. This my Christ swag. Party, yeah. My Christ swag. Yeah. Look. Uh, my whole style come from Christ yeah. So own it, no sir, you can't put a price Like white on rice, I got his blood on me To be honest, I just care about my guy, homie And if I'm only living for him It don't really even matter what y'all think of me Opinions, you can let them be I'm killing it, I let them see The old me is gone Keep the demons on my heart Then Christ found a home No more Patron or Nitrous I might just give God a praise with my best He's high, yes, glory in here, hallelujah, yes sir, put my trust in the Lord, I ain't having no fear, no I don't have a care, besides pleasing my father, tell any hater you see man, don't even bother, cause Jesus is my medicine, I ain't never hurting, catching waves of his glory, man I'm Christ swag, so yeah, just the way I walk, been set free, cause my father paid the cost, no I'm not perfect, God just forgave me, Got a new swag, praising Christ like I'm crazy. This my Christ swag, yeah. My Christ swag, yeah. Uh-huh. This my Christ swag, okay. Nah. My Christ swag, yeah. This my Christ swag, yeah. My Christ swag, yeah. Uh-huh. This my Christ swag. God squad. My Christ swag, yeah. La, uh, okay, you get it from my father uh-huh. Hit the toe swinging on that word, that's the motto yeah. Used to be a up or down flipper like the lie though uh-huh. Roll with big drinking ST, old squad uh-huh. though Now I'm uh-huh. aiming at the world with that blessed go yeah. Hard repetition, stay flexing, holy rollers know uh-huh. When you see that light shine, this ain't baby doe He ain't got a VVS on him, what a freak show uh-huh. nah. No, but I'm close with my father though yeah. I ain't Leroy, but the boy got a lot the glow took a whole lot of land out to kill his ego uh-huh. missing my whole purpose like Shaq with some free throws uh-huh. if you rap in vain can't edify the people uh-huh. swag on 100 gaining speed out of your flow and I'm top flow uh-huh. reaching for his glory you think I got some swag Christ the one that poured it on me I told him just the way I walk been set free cause my father paid the cost cost no I'm not perfect God just forgave me got a new swag praising Christ like I'm crazy this my Christ way, yeah. My Christ way, yeah. Uh-huh. This my Christ way, okay. My Christ way, yeah. This my Christ way, yeah. My Christ way, yeah. Uh-huh. This my Christ way. My Christ way, yeah. 